evening, Paul. Evening, Joe. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing really good. All right. Here we are at the second Northern Soul Night. Very highly anticipated after the first event. And already, it's early evening, there's a huge crowd already here. Yeah, we're here at the Deep Bar at the Ducey D2, or the range just starting. The first one was at what used to be Goodfellas, it's now called Play on Walking Street. We had about 120 people. We're now filming this, it's about 8.30 on a Friday evening. There's well over 100 people here already, and we came straight from a, a chamber event. So it's absolutely great numbers. But it's Northern Seoul. What the hell is Northern Seoul? You an idea? You uh, see no. It's before my time, <laughs> that's what it is. It, it's, it's the music from around about the mid-60s onwards, isn't it? Yeah, well, it is, is it? You know, it's, it's, not, it's not the Otis Redding stuff. No. It's not, it's not, it's, it's the stuff that came after that. And then this became this, this is what I'm told, this, this huge sort of dance craze. Now, I remember at the last event, I was amazed about the amount of guys who were dancing by themselves, right? But they're cool. That's yeah. okay, they can do it. It even got me dancing yeah, last yeah, time, yeah. so. It, it doesn't mean you haven't got any friends. And I'll tell you what, some of those guys can dance, so I'm looking forward to not just seeing them, but maybe speaking to some of them. Uh, tonight is organized by L Brown and Eva Johnson, and, and they've been the team from the very beginning. Uh, the DJ the last time was Barry Wilmot. This time they've got Barry's back again, but also Ricky Vaughan, who was the voice of Virgin Radio in Bangkok for many years. Uh, and then he was here with Mix and actually worked with me on PMTV. He has got this most chocolatey, beautiful voice, but he's a man who's just really into his music, as is Barry. So we'll speak to them. Let's go in and check it out. Well, we've checked it already, but the camera has it. So let's in. go in. Let's go look. All right. All right, the man who's kicked off the events here tonight for the second Northern Soul Night. He's just done a first hour. It's our old friend Ricky Vaughan. Ricky, how are you, mate? Hello, matey. Yeah. Good, good, good. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, so what are you writing so far? Yeah, okay, so far so good. Um, I think, you know, most people come in and they probably want to start and, yeah. and get rid of some inhibitions. Yeah. So they have a few sherbets and yeah. hopefully who is it? Barry's on now for another hour. I'll be back on about 10 through till 11. He'll be finishing it off. Hopefully by then they'll have had enough sherbets yeah. to start, you know, yeah, well, going and going well, and going. We were seeing this in the intro that actually, you know, I haven't experienced anything like this before. And I was amazed the last time that the amount of the numbers were there for the first event of this sort in Padia, but the amount of guys who are obviously very, very passionate about it. You know, I, I mean the dancing, obviously the music. Sure. It, lots of people, you say, you've interviewed people, I mean, you talk about Northern so people never lose that passion. You may even actually, I mean, I, years, I started in a cellar club for a pound a night. Right. Well, that's what I'm still earning. Oh, that, that? <laughs> a pound? Oh, oh my oh, God, yeah. who's your employer? <laughs> Absolutely. In a, a non-alcoholic coffee club down in Leeds in the, called the BG in the cellar then I went off to do other things and, and from there and I stuck on the sort of soul northern scene for quite a few years and then job took me away to do other things and uh, I sort of left it for a long long time then I came back then I left it then I came back and now I'm sort of back with a vengeance okay so it, it's, a, it's a bit like a a secret lover, right? It just never goes away. No, absolutely. One you can't get rid of. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like sort of yeah, I mean, hemorrhoids. Yeah, I was going to say herpes, but never mind. <laughs> All right. So now Joe and I, we I don't know if we're a bit young for it or we just don't know. Because it's not soul. It's not Marvin Gaye and Otis Redding. It's after that, is it? Yeah, is it a different I, genre? I mean, yeah, it is. I mean, people sort of, purists would look down on Motown right. and stuff. But when I first started, I was playing Motown. I was playing Otis Redding. Yeah. And I, but I was playing Northern Soul. Not too much. I mean, then it was sort of like Soul. 
and then that sort of drifted away. That was sort of the birth of, of, of everything, and then it got into what it is now. But you say you might be too young. I mean, I've been back to UK for 15 years, believe it or not. But I check out on the old uh, website and all that, and, and the things like booming with young kids. And I think the funny thing is, it's kids that have actually, if you ask them, well, how did you get into Northern Cell then, uh, Tommy? He well, my dad. So but that's it. You know, dads are responsible for a lot of music that gets handed. Sure. Down, right? Yeah, right. whether okay. it's Soul or Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> well, listen, great effort. I mean, I know for you, this isn't this isn't work. This is you know, this is you. This is this you. Is a, this uh, is a good crack. This is a chance for you to get out and do you something wish. that you as a hobby and do it kind of professionally. Yeah. I mean, I hope later on we'll see a few more people dancing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the venue's okay. Difficult part from a DJ point of standpoint is that you're actually working two levels, so you can't see what is actually going on on top, whether yeah. people are having fun or they're not. Yeah. And and so and, and and certainly when you're not working radio and you're working live gigs. What you thrive on is is that visual feedback of people dancing. If they're not, if they're yeah, not yeah. dancing, yeah. then it's up to you to put something so on that'll make them dance. Yeah, yeah. Right, you know. Okay. Well, that's a valid comment. But otherwise, I have to say it's a very good venue. I've been here many times for networking, and I have to say, for networking, I I haven't enjoyed it as much because I don't get the feeling there's there has that fluidity that you can move around. But maybe, maybe that's because I'm looking at it from a corporate side. Yeah. Because tonight I've been kind of working the room. So I'm contradicting myself. There you go, right. again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, listen. Great effort, Ricky. And I'll tell you what, tonight, I mean, already, you, I think you've exceeded the numbers that you had the last time. And well, you know, that's down to, and I'm, I've got to say it's down to Eva, Eva Johnson and Earl Brown. Yeah. They, they sort of started the thing off with Barry. Yeah. Uh, and I, I attended the first one, and I was listening. In fact, a pal of mine, I wouldn't have known about it except for a pal of mine who said, Ricky, Northern Cell Nights at play. And I said, Wow, okay, let's go. And then I gate crashed the party and said, yeah. Now nah, I think you need me in as well. So me. that's how it came. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, listen, you did a great first set. We'll look forward to your second set. Okay, we'll hand you over to Joe, who's going to speak to some of the other people who are responsible for tonight, or maybe just some of the people who are completely passionate about Northern Soul here at the Deep Bar at Ducet D2. Ricky, thanks Lovely. very much. Cheers, mate. Cheers, thanks a lot, Paul. Come on, come on. Okay, thanks, Paul. And we're now here with Barry Wilmore. Good evening, Barry. Hi there, Paul. Yeah. I'm Joe. Joe, that's Paul. Yeah, Sorry. We just had Paul, he was interviewing Ricky now. That's right, there you go, yeah. Joe. Okay, Joe. Yeah. Barry, you you did the cover the first event, which was at Play. Yeah. And now November the twenty fifth. Yeah, and now yeah. you're back here at yeah. the Ducit D two. Absolutely. What is it about Northern Soul? Oh, uh, Northern Soul is to be as quick as I can to summarise quickly, it started from the mod scene in the mid sixties in England in clubs like the Flamingo, the Marquee, the Whiskey in Birmingham, the Twisted Wheel in Manchester. And in the late 60s, the Northern DJs went over to the United States and brought in all this music that was never released in the UK and started playing it. To distinguish between the two sounds, the, the, the southern parts of the UK played a, a, t a f sort of a funk soul, whereas uh, the northern parts of the UK played a two beats to the bar Tamla Motown style, and it became known as Northern Soul, i.e. soul music played in the north of England. So where, where would Gladys Knight and the Pips fall into that category? Uh, absolutely right in, from Detroit, uh, they, were, they were Motown, but um, they were one of the original groups back from the early 60s, and they fit into it right smack in the middle. They had more commercial success than the majority of Northern Soul artists, but they fit right in the middle. I'm going to play a couple of Gladys Knight tracks later. Okay, we're going to look forward to that. Yeah. And also, everybody's dancing. Yeah, I want a few more to dance, but um, it takes a bit of time. It's still early, it's only 9.15. Wait till 10 o'clock, wait till 11 o'clock, and then we'll see. 
when the old amber nectar kicks in a little bit amber maybe nectar and the old guys like me start waking up you know <laughs> Uh, and the, mu the music still moves us, that's the thing. And uh, n the northern soul scene throughout the world now, Australia, Europe, even the States, now Thailand, northern soul moves the people. Okay. Well, as I say, it, it's so great. It even gets me dancing. Good. And, and while Paul was interviewing Ricky, Ricky. Yeah. I was dancing with his wife, Gail. Oh, so, lucky for you. Yeah, so <laughs> I sneaked a quick dance in with her. Yeah. Uh, as I say, everyone's having fun. It's a great social event. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is a fantastic evening. You know, and, and, and the fact is that all the money is going to um, Melissa Cosgrove Foundation. It makes it even better. It does. Yeah. Barry, it's been a pleasure meeting you. And you, Joe, yeah. We're going to have a great evening. We will, Let's yeah. go. Thank you, yeah. And now I'm going to hand the microphone back to Paul. Now, if there's one image that sticks in my mind from the first Northern Soul night, it's this young man dancing. And he is an incredible dancer. Actually, let me introduce you first. It's Jimmy Malone. Yeah, Hello, Jim Jimmy. Jimmy Malone. Very nice. Yeah. And nice where are you from, Jimmy? I'm actually from Scotland, but I've oh, been brought really? up in England. Oh, you know? right. But yeah. you've got a very strong Scottish accent. Glaswegian, I believe. Correct. I change, uh, I change it like the weather, you know. Okay. If I speak, if you speak English or Chinese or Thai, I just change. All right. Okay. You know. Okay. But the weather in Scotland never changes. It's always. It's always bad. Bleak. It's, it's always, always bleak. bleak. Yeah. Crap. I think is the word you asked if we were allowed to use. Crap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right, Jimmy. I, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. Show us some of your moves. I'll hold your wine. Go on. Just, just go on. Oh, this would. Go on. Been, this would have been better if it was on the dance floor just inside. Just give us an idea. No, I am on the spot, Anna. backdrops you know I'm, I'm too old I'm no, over 50 you know no well I'll tell you what mate tell you, you can take your wine back Thank you. you don't you don't look it now we were talking to Ricky Vaughan and um, Joe's just been speaking to Barry yeah no northern soul well like 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 anything and I guess it's to do with the formative years you know uh -huh. yeah the, the, those teenage years yep. it's I mean I look back on the music I was listening to when I was a teenager, and I love it, because it brings back all the memories, all the free friends and faces. Yep. And it actually, I mean, you know, I, I, I grew up listening to stuff like Madness, which... Yep. I've you know, got some of their well, music. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, it's, it's, but it, but it doesn't have some of the soul that perhaps, uh, the, excuse the pun, that this music has. But is that what it's for, is that what it is for you, Northern Yeah, soul? because uh, years ago, everyone was listening to the, the, Top of the pops in the UK now, right. and it was a lot of heavy metal and guys were long hair. Okay. But the Northern Soul scene was very different. Okay. This was music that you couldn't buy in the shops. Right. You couldn't hear it on the radio. Right. And then it was like it was an underground movement, and you would go away at the weekend. So only at the clubs, you mean? All these special clubs that only started at midnight right. till eight in the morning. Right. So you take enough gear, enough clothes for like two days with you, yeah. travel nine, ten hours on a coach. And get there at midnight and really? dance for eight hours solid. My goodness! You know. So, so where was this happening? Up everywhere. Wigan Casino is one of the most famous ones. You've also got uh, St Ives in uh, Hundred and Shear. Uh, Cleethorpes is also a Cleethorpes Pier and Cleethorpes uh, Winter Gardens. Right. It was all over the country, but it was secret. It's top secret. It was like James right. Bond 007. Right, okay, right, okay. If you wasn't in the know, you didn't know yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. was a couple of magazines: the Black Echo and the Blues and Soul magazine. And that's how you'd wait till it come out on a Thursday, yeah. and that was when, and then you'd work out where you're going for the weekend. Wow. And you wouldn't come back till late yeah. Sunday night or Monday morning, and you were always. So it's a, it's a bit like, you know, 25 years 25 years later. That's what they did with the rave scene. Correct. It was all private, Correct. private, you know, in the no parties. Well, this this is it because uh, after the Northern Soul, your jazz funk came in. Okay. And then all the the other stuff came in, the techno, techno stuff. Right. So basically, this was like a pioneer. But I'm sure there was other music in the 40s and 50s yeah. that were pioneer as well. Right. But I was involved in one pioneer in uh, age, and that was this Northern Soul stuff. Okay. Right. So tell me, well, it's a double battle. How how did you hear about the first one, and what were your thoughts on it? How did I hear oh, up about until the, first the ones? Up until the point yeah. that you can't remember. <laughs> Same as me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I don't know, I heard through the grapevine okay. uh, and I turned up and it was a great venue, great bunch of people. We just had a fantastic night. Unfortunately, it finished at midnight, yeah. but a lot of us could yeah. have done a whole all night until late in the morning. Yeah. All right, well, you know, you're hardcore, obviously. And tonight, so far, have you been up dancing yet? Or is it early days? Uh, I've just been uh, getting just rid of some rubber off the okay. bottom of my shoes, you okay. know, but uh, we're going to go up on the dance floor later on because right. there's not much room down here no, on this no. deck. We're going to no. go up on the top deck and yeah. start doing some dancing. Yeah. And okay. hopefully not fall over and uh, and fall down. Well, you know, a few a few people fell over the last time, but, you know, that's, that's part of the gig, isn't it? 